My name is Michelle. I want to thank you for tuning in and watching another video. This is a playlist or a series of videos that I record when subscribers or members of my Facebook group ask questions that I think are um, common to most notaries, specifically in Alabama, and may even spill over to a few other states. And in this video, I'll be responding to a question regarding prison or jail notarizations. If you're new to this channel, welcome. And I'd like for all of you, if you haven't had a chance yet to view the other Q&A videos, I want to encourage you to seek them out. They tend to have a Kelly Green background. We've answered topics regarding the different type of notary signing agent directories or platforms to use. In another video, I answered the question about whether it's a good idea to change your notary business name midstream, the pros and cons of doing that. Also in a, a separate video, I answer the question about when can Alabama notaries refuse to perform a notarization. And then um, there is another video that talks about the mandatory notary training in any exam or test requirements. So again, if you haven't watched those videos yet, I want to encourage you to do so. Some very helpful information for those of you who are commissioned Alabama notaries. And most importantly, if you have a question that's been hanging around in your head, you've been wondering about, go ahead and post that question below in the comments. You can also send me an email. You'll find that contact information in the video description, and I'll do my best to get an answer for you. Now let's go ahead, and now that that's behind us, and I will share my screen so that we can talk about the topic of today, which is me answering the question, Michelle, have you gone to the prisons to perform notarizations? And if so, how do you verify the identity of the inmate since they likely won't have a driver's license? Do they even have any ID in their possession? And this question came from one of the members of my Facebook group. And I'll tell you more about that later in case you want to join. In order to answer this question, I do need to provide a little background. I think it's important for us to remember what the traditional approved ID requirements are for us notaries here in the state of Alabama. Positive ID can be made by using personal knowledge, first and foremost. So if you personally know the inmate, then you will not have to ask for any additional ID. The second way to positively ID a signer or someone who wants their signature notarized in Alabama is to request government issue ID. That can be state government, federal government, um, and municipalities. The three most common types of ID that we notaries will see and be presented with are a driver's license, the non-driver's state ID card, or a U.S. passport. 
Now that doesn't mean there aren't other acceptable IDs, but these are the ones that we see most often. In addition to the different types of ID cards, it's important that we remember Alabama's notary laws are very clear. It is important that we don't even allow the signer to sign a document until after we have positively identified them. All right, so again, them coming to you, everything's signed, and now they just want you to stamp it and look at their ID then. Um, the answer is no on that. So this is what the norm is, but we know that if the signer is in jail or in prison, those are not normal circumstances. And because most inmates don't have their wallets on them. And, and so this is why I thought this was a fair question. Keep in mind, even though I shouldn't say a fair question, but a good question to talk about, even though someone is incarcerated, whether it's in jail or in prison, that doesn't mean that they give up the right to have their signature notarized. In fact, I'm thinking someone who is incarcerated may need the assistance of a notary uh, more often because life keeps life in and life is life and more when someone is locked up. Um, I think of, I've done a number of um, notarizations for individuals who are in jail, one of the common notarization requests that come around is when the individual who may have been driving under the influence got pulled over and their vehicle got impounded. And now a family member is trying to get that car out of the pound so that they can stop ra um, racking up all this money, but they can't get the car out if the car is registered in the name of the person who is in jail. And I mean, the list goes on. So this is a situation, a need, a requirement that comes up quite a bit. So what do we do um, when a notary is asked to notarize the signature of someone who doesn't have their wallet on them, doesn't have ID, what's, what's next? I did some um, research and unfortunately, Alabama's notary law doesn't go into detail about this, but I poked around, I went on the Alabama Secretary of State's website because I was looking for other types of valid ID that can be used in very important situations. And on the Secretary of State's website, it states that if an inmate wanted to vote, this is a type of ID that would be acceptable. Now this is for voting, but I'm willing to say this would probably work. I believe it would work for notarization. And that is if the individual was able to produce a valid Alabama Department of Corrections release form. Um, it can be used as temporary ID as long as it has a photograph of the inmate or former inmate. Another option would be a valid Alabama movement or booking sheet from, pris from the prison or jail system that also would have to have a photograph of the inmate. So Alabama notaries, 
I would suggest that you ask if they don't have uh, a license. We know they won't have a license on them. Um, when you're contacted to perform this type of notarization, you may want to ask the person reaching out to you if one or both of these documents would be available to you to use to help you verify the inmate's identity. If you haven't already, go ahead and jot down the Alabama Secretary of State website. I'll make sure that I um, include a link below because I know the font is small, but it is um, www.sos.alabama.gov forward slash Alabama votes. And then you look for the link for voter photo voter ID. What has worked for me more times than not is when I am contacted to perform a jail notarization is that I ask about the ID. Does the inmate have ID? And if they're not sure or if the answer is no, then I tell the person contacting me they're going to need to obtain ID for the inmate and get that to me prior to me meeting with the inmate. And so I've had examples where the family member will just be there waiting for me at the appointed time, hand me the driver's license or the state ID or the passport, and I take that in with me when I go to meet with the inmate. Now that I'm talking about this, I'll probably do a follow-up um, video on prison notarizations because there's also the, the aspect of getting that journal signed and getting through security, um, which is why I've stopped performing um, jail and prison IDs. There's just a lot that goes into it. It is not something that is very quick and easy. Um, I want to encourage you to make no assumptions about the inmate's ID. I believe, um, and you know, things do change over time, but I believe most inmates have on them either a badge, a bracelet, or something identifying them. But there is nothing in Alabama's notary law that says we can use those alternate forms of verifying a person's identity. And no, I don't assume that if they're in prison, that there's no way for um, the ID not to be accurate. This is what I mean. I'm not sure that there is any monkey business going on so that when the inmate is on his or her way to meet with me, that ID isn't being switched. Um, I have nothing but the utmost respect for law enforcement and those who are in charge of our jails and prisons, but we, especially here in Alabama, um, have had recent examples when individuals in charge of prisoners have not been on the up and up. And so that's why I'm not going to assume just because the inmate shows me a badge or bracelet with their last name on it, that that is sufficient to satisfy Alabama notary law requirements. Now, in some other states, notaries have the option of using credible witnesses to verify the signer's identity. In the state of Alabama, we are not able to use a credible witness. All right, so that is not an option. 
credible witnesses is usually when friends or family or other individuals can vouch for enough for the signer's identity without the signer having to produce ID. Again, that's not an option here. In closing, as I wrap up here, um, I, this slide kind of talks about it. The chances of improperly identifying an inmate is slim, but Alabama's notary law offers clear guidelines on acceptable types of ID. As long as we stay within those guidelines, it is less likely for it to be said that we as notaries were acting in a negligent manner. And granted, I did suggest that we look to Alabama's voter laws as an exceptional, as an alternative. But again, I really liked um, what their requirements are. And um, I know personally, I'm going to be fine with asking for the booking information with photo. You may not be. And that is okay. I am not telling you that you must do this. Um, but without the state ID, without um, the driver's license, the passport, and a few other items, you may find yourself in a situation where you're going to need to decline the notarization. Next steps for me, um, this whole topic prompted me to reach out to the Alabama Department of Corrections and ask them the question. Let them know that I'm asking on behalf of notaries throughout the state and um, get a better understanding from them about what types of ID an inmate may have on their person when they meet with the notary. I'll be sure to share that with you. And um, I think a follow-up question I need to ask the Department of Corrections is really to just provide us with some guidelines about what we should do as Alabama notaries when family members or an inmate reach out to us and ask us to perform a jail or prison notarization? Are there things, guidelines, policies, procedures that we as notaries should be following? Will we need to produce additional forms of IDs ourselves just to be admitted into the facility? And again, I'll make sure that I post that information in a follow-up video. I hope that information is somewhat helpful to you and to the notary who posted the question. I hope you find this helpful. And if so, let me not let me know. And if you, those of you who are watching, if you've been performing prison and jail notarizations, let me know in the comments how it worked out for you what obstacles you encountered and how you resolved them. Real quick, before I log off, I want to remind you of some resources. I have three books on Amazon that you may find helpful. As you know, we are in the midst of a general election season. Um, that prompted me to um, write a book and uh, on notarizing Alabama's absentee ballot. Keep in mind as notaries, you may find yourself um, being asked to notarize or witness an Alabama absentee affidavit and or ballot. It's important for you to know how to do that correctly so that you are not making mistakes that could prevent someone's ballot from being counted. So there's an ebook here. You will also find a video here on my channel that talks about this as well. And then another book for you to consider. Those of you 
who have been thinking about becoming an Alabama notary, getting started as an Alabama notary public will walk you through the new process of obtaining and or renewing your notary commission. And then finally, I know that font is small. I'm going to need to update that cover. This ebook is on Alabama's Notary Accountability Act of 2023, the new notary law. I hope by now every notary is aware and aspiring notary is aware of the new laws that went into effect for notaries on September 1, 2023. If not, that ebook is a great way for you to find out. So those are those resources. Another resource for you, if you are not a current member of Notaries for Alabama Hangout, please join us. It is free. It is a Facebook group where you can network with over 1,600 notaries or aspiring notaries across the state. This is a great way for you to stay up to date on what's taking place in the notary public community here in Alabama. I'm really excited to let you know about a notary meetup that's being hosted in Mobile County, Alabama. Um, October 19th is the date. The coordinator for this event is Frank B. His last name starts with the B, Barrer, might be it, but Frank is his first name. Um, he will be announcing the exact location and time in just a little bit. So again, look for this Facebook group. It's not a page, it's a group. On Facebook, join, answer the questions and join so that you can stay informed. And then the last resource I wanna point out to you is trainalabama.com. This is where I post um, classes, webinars, this is a great place if you want to purchase your notary bond from a local Alabama insurance agent, which I am. You can do so if you want to download copies of the new laws um, and then um, hear about any upcoming classes, whether they are live, whether they are on demand. Um, so a lot of good, helpful information. I want to um, just thank you for tuning in to this video. If you have not subscribed to this YouTube channel, take a moment and do so. Um, there's just not a lot of information being pushed out to Alabama notaries. And so it is critical that you stay dialed in and connected so that you're always up to date on any law changes. And if you found this information in this particular video helpful, go ahead and leave me a like and feel free to use that comment section with any questions that you may have. I want to thank you again for watching and I hope to see you again as a viewer in the next video. Have a great day.